Today I want to present to you my latest radiation detector. And no, I don't mean the Altimus, which you can see here, which is another professional device I was donated, and I'm actually going to compare it to the Gamma Scout in a future video. But what I'm actually talking about today is this. Yeah, that's my mobile phone indeed. And while there are a lot of bullshit applications that will uh, produce a Geiger counter, which is fake, which works by, for example, tilting the phone and uh, just gives a fake impression of a Geiger counter. There are actual real applications of Geiger counters out there. And uh, the way it works is, probably you remember my videos where I was visualizing ionizing radiation striking the camera CCD. Uh, that works especially in uh, high radiation areas, for example, around the pitch blender uranium ore. And some smart people actually managed to uh, turn those little flashes into an actual CPM or even dose reading. But uh, does it work well? Well, we're gonna see that today. We're gonna check out the radioactivity counter application by Rolf Dieter Klein, which is available on Google Play, formerly known as uh, the Android Market for the Android phone, but probably it's also available for the iPhone. You're gonna have to check that out. So let's actually start the application. First of all, it'll tell you to cover your camera lens because of course you don't want to measure any light, you just want to measure ionizing radiation. So you will have to cover your lens light proof. And I found the best method to do this to actually use just a small piece of aluminum foil, household aluminum foil, which is entirely light proof as opposed to the black tape, which is not entirely light proof and then put one layer of the black tape on the aluminum foil so you have a 100% light proof but also very thin uh, light shield that will let a lot of or most of ionizing radiation through and then you can just put that over your lens preferably even under the cover so uh, you remove the plastic lid and put it directly on the lens or you can just do it on the outside if you make sure that no light can enter from the sides either and you can see the bit uh, with aluminum foil and the black tape here. And then you just cover the lens and you're set. And what you can see here is an already calibrated application. Every step is very thoroughly explained on the website rdclined.de but also there's a little help file that comes with the application itself so uh, you'll be able to find out what to do easily. Yeah, you can see the, the taping and uh, at first you're gonna have to set the noise which will be an automatic calibration by the software basically and uh, it'll just determine the noise of your actual uh, camera in there, of the actual CCD so uh, that will take quite a, quite a long time, maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes it'll just be a repetitive measurements of one minute and then it starts again and tells you to please wait but that's totally normal and after that you'll have it calibrated and what it does in that time you can actually find in settings you can see that the noise, the exposure, the border of the actual CCD has been set. This is done automatically by the software during calibration, but you can also manually change these values if something is not quite right. You can also set your average background radiation, let's say 200 nanosievert per hour, which is 0.2 microsievert per hour. You can enable or disable the front cam in case you have two cameras in your phone. You can enable or disable the alarm. Uh, alarm threshold wherein a sound will go off. You can enable or disable the click sound. I'm gonna turn on the click sound now. And enable or disable the location settings which will be using GPS tracking. There's a little help file as I mentioned before which uh, gives you a rough idea of what to do. The only downside is uh, the English is not very good. Sometimes the sentences don't make sense but it'll still get you started, no problem. Even for the non-experienced user it's very easy. Then there's the option to set noise, which is basically just recalibration in case you were doing something wrong. Calc has a nice little conversion table here for converting the most common units like the RAM, Röntgen, stuff like this, grey. Now with the buttons on the main window of the software, you actually have a little spec button here. If I press that, you will get a spectrum of the radiation on the CCD. This will not allow you to do gamma spectroscopy, but it is more just for uh, calibration of the noise setting. It's not like this is a gamma spectrum. 
Uh, you can switch back to grab, which is just uh, whoops, which is just uh, the counts per minute you got. So within the past three minutes, we got 11 counts, 13 counts, and currently five counts for 30 seconds of measuring. Uh, you can clear the whole graph, so we'll restart again. In this bit of the window, you can see the flashes of radiation where the CCD actually registered incoming, well, photons, but not light, but ionizing radiation. Now here is also an interesting button, Start Lock. When you press that, you can enter a name and actually lock the activity. So uh, you might, for example, carry your uh, phone in your pocket, walk around with a lock setting on, very discreet, and just walk around and actually find out where you have been measuring increased amounts of radiation. And how that works is simply by, you can see here, if you go to Statistic in the menu, you can choose your lock. So now you can see my log file here. You can make different adjustment, a bar graph or different one minute uh, blocks or more than that, CPM or you could switch over to microgray per hour for example. But what you can also do is with the menu in here, you can see you can delete this stuff, export it to for example HTML, but you can also show it on the map. So if you have GPS tracking enabled, then you can later on review where you have been on the map and where you have found increased amounts of radiation. So I'm not going to click on here because I don't want to reveal where I live exactly, but uh, this is a really cool feature in my opinion. And then there's the adjust button in this menu here, which is also very important because uh, you can see that it actually converts CPM to reading in microgray per hour. Before you made any adjustment in this window, you will not get a microgray per hour reading, an actual equivalent dose reading, but you will just get the CPM reading. So uh, how to find out uh, those numbers who are just like how many CPM equal to what kind of dose rate? Well, you can actually find that within a table on the website of the manufacturer. You can see uh, the, the settings that will be done by auto calibration, but you can also see uh, how many CPM equal to uh, how much of a dose rate for your specific sensor, for your specific uh, smartphone. Uh, it has this for most of the phones, you can see. Where's mine? That's mine, it's just the Ideas X3 from Huawei, or however you say that. And you can see there's also a rating of stars, how well these uh, detectors, these cameras actually work. Mine just has three stars and uh, it works best with four stars and up and it's very bad if you have a smartphone that has just one or two stars. So um, before buying this application you can actually check out if it works, if this application works well with your smartphone on this website, on this extensive table here. But now what we really need to do is check the reading of uh, this Geiger counter application versus the actual true proper dosimeter. So for now we just have background radiation and uh, you can see it's very similar to the readings you actually get on the real dosimeters. We're just gonna wait for about five minutes now so the thing can adjust and probably average reading which will be shown here. So let's see. So you can see after a couple of minutes there have been fluctuating counts, incoming counts, but the dose reading is still around the normal true radiation readings around here. So um, what we actually have to do now is bring a source close to the little camera and see what happens. So first of all I will be using the main isotope used for calibration, cesium-137 in front of the Gamma Scout with the shields closed. And you can see it produces a reading of about 1.5 microsievert per hour. So we're going to do the same for the outer mass here. I'll just put that on. And you can see it quickly produces a quite different reading of 3.5 microsievert per hour. That is because, I guess, the shield on the actual outer mass be behind the Gamma uh, Giga Miller counter is actually uh, less than the shield with the Gamma Scout. If I put the Gamma Scout on there just with the plastic, you can see that we're getting a higher reading as well. So that's beta and gamma radiation entering. Now what really matters is what will that little application do? So I'm gonna start the application again. 
while putting it right on where the camera is. And what you can see, of course, it doesn't work as fast, that's for sure. It doesn't work as fast as the real decimeters. But you can see, after a minute or so, it seems to be detecting slightly more than the average background radiation that we had before. But well, we're going to give this an equal 5 minutes, same as we did before, and then have a look again. So yeah, what you can actually see after, uh, well, almost 5 minutes average, uh, we get 2.62 micrograin, which equals to 2.62 microsievert per hour for the radiation it, it can detect, which is uh, beta and gamma radiation. Uh, so this is quite similar to the actual readings that we're getting on the proper dosimeters, surprisingly. You can see that one of the bars here is really high, and for that it displayed a reading of like uh, 15 microsievert per hour. I suppose that is because of a random incident of, for example, Compton scattering right within the CCD, so that produced a very high reading for once. But uh, if you take an average reading of at least 5 minutes, of that source. It seems to be quite similar to those real readings and you can definitely uh, measure it. It just takes a much longer time to react to it, but you can measure it. Then again, on the website it says difficult to measure anything below 1 to 10 microsievert per hour. Remember we had about 3 microsievert per hour on the true decimeters. And uh, low sensitive devices are also not so good. Uh, for the good ones, above 4 stars, you will still need a very long measurement time. And uh, remember, my Huawei cheap phone still uh, only has 3 stars, so let's actually check out a stronger source and see how it behaves then. So, here's the stronger source, my all-time favorite, uranium ore. Let's see what happens if we put the gamma scout on top of that. It can already detect it from a distance, so it was 20 microsievert per hour just sitting there on the table. And you can see it reads just about yeah, close to 300 microsievert per hour here. Now if we put the outer mass on top of that, you now we have very close to the Gamma Scout readings. So let's check out what the Geiger count application does. If the, uh, the camera is about in the same spot above that pitch plant of uranium ore. And you can immediately see many, many more flashes coming up here. And you can immediately see, without having to wait for a long time, a much higher reading than actual background radiation. Yeah, that's definitely much higher. And it's very quick with runs time as well. You could tell that there's an increased level of radiation within the initial second of turning on this little uh, Giga counter or decimeter application. So let's wait for another five minutes again, same as before. So what you can see after the same amount of time here is that we get a reading of 324 microgray or microsievert per hour, which is very close to the actual around 250 uh, sort of 250 microsievert per hour we were getting on the true decimeters. So uh, it's, it's quite awesome actually, because this is quite an accurate reading for uh, if you just imagine that we're using a camera phone and nothing else. So the summary about this application is that it's very well done. It's very easy to see what's going on even for the layperson. It has a logging function which includes uh, GPS logging. So you can actually find out where you have had increased levels of radiation while being very discreet and, for example, just carrying the phone around in your pocket. The battery consumption doesn't seem to be too high either. Same as probably when you're running an instant messaging service or something on it. It has an auto calibration, but you can also uh, change the settings of that automatic calibration in case it doesn't work out very well. But uh, it seemed to be perfectly fine for uh, my phone. Then it has a nice little conversion table of uh, those readings and units. 
it has this statistic function which is for analyzing your log file and you can also make further adjustments like for example you can convert these CPM readings to actual dose reading either from getting it on the table uh, of the manufacturer's website or you could con compare it to uh, for example the readings of a proper dosimeter which for maybe a friend of yours has or something and then actually use that to calibrate your phone if your phone is not on the list on that side and there are also settings uh, of which camera you want to use an alarm mode, a click sound so you might for example for a very discreet reading you might uh, turn off the click sound but turn on the actual alarm so you just get alarmed when there's a high level of radiation around you yeah, the location setting, as I said before, is very awesome. You will find that in your logs. You can actually find out where you have been during an increased amount of radiation. Uh, the only downside little is that they really should get a native English, English speaker or a near native English speaker for their help file because it's not very ideal, but the rest of the application is very good. It's surprisingly accurate as compared to uh, a proper dosimeter, which is very surprising, even at low levels of radiation. Of course, you will not be able to detect very low levels of radiation, such as in your food, for example, but you cannot even do that with a normal Geiger counter as well. You need a very sensitive scintillation counter, for example, to measure that. At very low levels of ionizing radiation, uh, like a cesium source, a tiny cesium calibration source, it is not very sensitive and requires like a minute or so to actually adjust and react to it and measure it. But definitely, if you're in an area of truly high levels of radiation, like uh, levels of radiation you probably don't want to stay around for good, then this is a really, really well application. It can instantly warn you of uh, very high levels of radiation, such as, uh, I don't know, from a dirty nuclear bomb, from whatever you want to imagine, the nuclear power plant next to you blowing up, something like that. It really works very well. And the thing is, most people will have a smartphone already. If you don't, then investing in a smartphone just to use this application is bullshit, of course. But uh, this application costs uh, 3 euros and 50 cents, which is about uh, the equivalent to 5 US dollars. And if you already have a smartphone, you can just uh, throw in 5 US dollars and actually have a quite well layperson uh, radiation dosimeter. It's really a great application. I would strongly recommend it to anybody who wants to measure radiation for fun or who wants to kind of keep track of the radiation around them, for example people in Japan.